Waziri, look, in this country, the past nine years, under the presidency of Uhuru Kenyatta, we've been treated to different styles of working. Uh, the moment we talk about a President Kenyatta who doesn't get along with his deputy, what has this meant for you as a cabinet secretary working for a government where you are recruited by the two bosses who, understandably, are not getting along now? You know, um, we only have one presidency. Mm? And the head of that presidency is a president. So you don't have to get into politics of who is working with who, as long as you know that you have one government, you have one presidency, with one set of objectives, with one uh, manifesto, which we are trying to implement. Other issues become political and we are not involved in all that. Mm -hmm. Yes. And how would you compare between the workings of um, the government in the first term versus the second term? When is it that you've been able to achieve more? You see, if you get into new, uh, um, a new administration, in 2013 it was a new administration, yeah, from the Kibaki administration. What happens is, the first two years, there's a lot of planning which go in the first two years. Like I remember we were taken to Mount Kenya Safari Club, all of us in government, to do planning as to what you're going to do in each of your ministries. So you can say, and this is applies to every government, mm -hmm. even the next government which will come, they have to spend one or two years just planning. So two out of the five years, so you have three years. The second term is when now the agent is really running, yeah, because it's a continuation of what you are doing in the first term. So naturally, without argument, objectively, most work is done in the second term. That's why you fight like now, for, for example, expressway, second term. Um, these roads we are doing, we have done now 10,500 kilometers of roads. In the first term, I believe we did less than 4,000. Because we are conceptualizing, like now uh, this is uh, a subject of low volume sea roads. It's a new concept which we came up with. To be able to do very many kilometers of roads, it was conceptualized I think around 2015, 2016. Right. Already three years are gone. So most of the kilometers of roads have been done in the second term, naturally, mm -hmm. because that's when the engine is running very, very fast. Mm -hmm. That's why we, every day which goes, we have to know what have we achieved. Mm -hmm. Because uh, come August next year, many of us may not be in the next government. <laughs> Was there a, what's the relationship with the deputy president like? Well, he's a deputy president, I'm the CS. What's your relationship? He's a deputy president, I'm, I'm the CS. That's the relationship. When is the last time you spoke to him? Well, um, I spoke to him yesterday. Before yesterday? No, yesterday we met in State House and I said Jambo. Y yesterday was Jamhuri Day. Mm? So, so, uh, <laughs> so we discussed. <laughs> so, but uh, other things we, we, we may not want to, to go into all that, but I spoke to him yesterday. Waziri, you spoke to the deputy president on Jamhuri Day, which was a state function. But before then, when is the last time you spoke to him? Um, well, I don't think you keep a tab uh, as to when we speak. And, and so, yeah. How often have you been able to meet within cabinet lately, especially for 2021? Meet what? Uh, cabinet meetings. Well, we have cabinet every, every two weeks. Yeah. Every two weeks, we have a cabinet. Chaired by the president? No, they were this uh, NDICC. Uh huh, the Matengi led committee. Yeah, and we go through cabinet memos. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how much of that has had the input of the deputy president? <laughs> well, he's not a member of NDICC, so. Yeah. If you had to reflect on that, because, I mean, the workings of the government, and I'm sorry if this is uncomfortable, I'm asking because you're the only man amongst the few that are here who sits, who sits in cabinet, but Kenyans imagine that they would have a cabinet that works towards delivering to the people where the president and the deputy are working towards the same goal, and are we at a situation that that is not happening, and if you have to look at the sentiments that have been in the political circle, it is evident. Does it affect you and how you do your work? Not at all. In fact, um like I said, um, 
to us we are guided by the objectives we have set you know uh, we are guided by what was uh, committed to Kenyans by what was in the prospectus by for example how many roads uh, kilometers am I supposed to do that's what guides me and um, if I have a project I bring it to NDICC and it's approved and we move on so in fact we have moved faster like I said in the second half because we uh, we are looking ahead and saying time is limited so we have to work 24 hours we have to work Sundays we we have one presidency we, we report to so we don't have issues to do with the the political arena what is happening out there we are not employed for that purpose mm -hmm. we are going to deliver and this is what exactly what we are doing there is a perception out here that um different cabinet secretaries are allied to different personalities like uh, yourself and others allied to the president others allied to the deputy president do you feel the impact of that because it's okay for people to have preferences but do you feel the impact of that as you do your work well it, i don't think um, that's a real situation sam because we have only one appointing authority so i'll be surprised if somebody is allied to anybody else other than the appointing authority we are allied to the person who appointed you and the appointment was done by the president mm -hmm. so if there are people allied to other people i think um, that is uh, something which i am not aware of was there there'll be an election in august 2022 what in your view would be some of the uh, uh, the checklist that Kenyans must get in electing who succeeds President Kenyatta? Well, the most important thing to note is that um, you cannot finish all the work in five years or even ten years. There will be work in progress. To me, now talking as a Kenyan, mm, not as a CS, as a voter, and what I would advise people is to vote the people who ensure that there is continuity on what we are doing now. If, for example, I'm going to launch the Nakuru, uh, this uh, Nairobi Mao Summit road, it will be done in the next four years. I want to be assured that the government which will be there will complete that project because it's a major, major piece of infrastructure. And so I'll be guided by the composition of that team which you make sure that those jobs are completed mm -hmm. not just in my sector but across the entire government so i'll be advising people if they can take my advice to make sure they cast their vote where we shall get assurance of continuity mm -hmm. and you know, when you look at um, the field as it is now there are few presidential hopefuls do you see any person who or persons who can further that idea well they have not yet given us their prospectus when they do give us their prospectus then we shall be able to judge accordingly i have an idea but i will not confirm until i see the prospectus <laughs> you have an idea was it a, a few of your colleagues recently attended a meeting of mount kenya foundation talk about cs munya um, joe mushero Margaret Kobia, Cicely Karaoke, and other PSAs and CASs, and they sort of endorsed the candidature of Raila Odinga. Then the following day, there was a meeting at uh, Kasarani, uh, a Zimio Lomoja convention, and would appear to be in tune with, with what Raila Odinga is trying to do. And there has been complaints that um, these are cabinet secretaries engaging in politics. How do you respond to that? Had you been in the country, would you have been one of those attending? Well, I think the first thing to note is uh, cabinet secretaries are not prohibited from doing politics as a, by the constitution. What they understand they are prevented of doing, prevented of, pre prevented of doing is having political posts or political party posts. Mm -hmm. So, because at the end of the day, you're also a Kenyan. You have a right to express yourself as you may wish. So um, I will not answer for those who went there because um, you know, I'm sure you'll be able to ask them. Uh, but uh, obviously somebody has got a choice. 
But when that choice is made in such a polarized political situation, yet you hold a national office where you're delivering services to none, none of the um, political sides, aren't you worried about that perception? At the end of the day, um, see, we, we shall be allowed to vote. I got, I'll be voting myself. And I'll be advising people how to vote. But how we vote, it will depend on how you assess individually, hmm? the prospectors you'll be given to you, yeah? Then you decide yourself. Okay. Yeah. So had you been in the country, would, that, would you have been at Kasarani? <laughs> That's hypothetical now. <laughs> because I wasn't here, so... <laughs> <laughs> I see what you're doing there. Yes. Uh, but Waziri, so, no, so much experience um, in running government, corporate, a bit of uh, political experience. Where do you take all this? Because in August 2022, you'll have to leave because the term of President Kenyatta is coming to an end. What next? Well, um, the first thing is to make sure we, we go as far as we can, God willing, up to August next year. Uh, you will know if you're a pu public servant and you want a public of, uh, political s position, mm -hmm. you must resign around February. So you know a lot of uh, things will happen on that day, on the 8th of February. Mm -hmm. And I bet you'll be running a very huge uh, headline the following day. Because you don't need to ask anybody. Mm -hmm. It will be there for you to see. So hopefully you can be patient enough <laughs> <laughs> for, for another two months, <laughs> and then you'll see what will happen. Really, Waziri? What are you thinking? Uh, uh, no, um, two months is a long time. So you asked me about last week, about uh, <laughs> Azimia. Yes. And frankly, if I was there, I could have gone, yes. I could have gone to, to listen to what was, was being said. Because you also have to make an informed decision as you move forward. Why so, not? So does that say anything about your political leaning? No, I'm just going to uh, educate myself better. <laughs> uh, to know the future of... Uh, of what people want to do. Was it you can get educated from TV? Come, come, come February, come February, the 9th, uh -huh. uh, I suppose you, you know everything because these people have declared their positions. No, Waziri, you're saying that you'd have gone to Kasarani for the Azimil of Moja. You know you can actually attend that and follow the proceedings on TV. Citizen TV was carrying it live. So does that say anything about your political leaning? That's what I'm asking. No, you see, um, the same thing with Jamuhuri. I could have done it on TV, but I went to Jamuhuri Uhur Gardens. So <laughs> the same argument. <laughs> so you want to be there, part of it. Yeah? It's, it's better than uh, seeing things on TV. So yes. when there is a Hustlers Convention, will you be in attendance? Uh, you're saying if. Are you sh I don't know whether there will be one or not. Hmm? It all depends on what to be the you know, plan for that, for that event. Once again, it's hypothetical because we don't know whether it will happen or not. Okay, that's hypothetical. But what do you think about um, the idea to improve the economy through the bottom-up approach? <laughs> I don't know. I, don't, uh, uh, I can see now you are digging deep. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Answer my question. <laughs> Let us see the prospectors. You know, me, I don't want to comment on what people say on roof rooftops of vehicles. Yeah? You know, they do a rooftop. They say uh, anything. Me, um, I need to be informed properly by you know, reading a manifesto of somebody which outlines all those economic concepts and, and I see how it ties up. Then I can educate people who I, I talk to properly. But so far, have you seen a document? Was there this whole little time? I'm just wondering how you're educating the people. Mm -hmm. You come from Muranga County and you're not telling me you're going to walk the full stretch to August 2022 or you're thinking about running for political office or going back to the corporate world. Where's your heart? You see, um, Sam, th there's a reason why that date was set, six months before election. There's a reason why. If there was no reason, it could have been left open. Or they could have said, you have to resign uh, one year in advance, in which case by now you have known. So if they say six months before election, there is a good reason why it was set on, on that date. So why can't we wait for that date? Because 
it was objectively de determined okay. that six months is a good time for people now to be out there to do their policy. If it was not set six months, it was set one year. I could have dropped my work and going to the field to do politics at the expense of my mandate to deliver. Okay. So let's focus on what is before us. Let's focus on delivery on the 8th of February. We shall decide. Mm -hmm. Was it we were supposed to be taking this water, so maybe you can <laughs> help yourself. You shall decide. <laughs> And I have to say that I find that yeah, pretty interesting. But mm. as you say, we'll wait. L let's let's just um, wind it down. And so now here you are. What does the family think about what you've done, and what should be your next course of action in public life? Um, the family uh, certainly have, have been very supportive. Because nine years in government, you sacrifice a lot in terms of time for your family, in terms of even your own health. You sacrifice a lot. You know, you don't, don't do exercises, which you used to do. I don't play golf. I used to play golf. So you sacrifice a lot. And so that's why it's good to reflect and decide the future. Do you want to continue or do you want to change direction? Yeah? Because either way, you have to look at all those aspects um, and decide, is it time to change direction, to go back to private sector, to do this, to do that? That is something which you are thinking about. Okay. Uh, and and um, very soon we shall, we shall decide. Mm -hmm. yes. And your children are now grown. What are they thinking about their father and how to, is it emulate or take a different trajectory in their lives? Well, well the, um, Thankfully now my, my kids um, are grown-ups, yeah? got uh, 30 and 26 year old. They can make decisions appropriately. Um, I joined government when they were fairly young. And so unfortunately we didn't have enough time for them to, to, to grow up close to, to us as much as well I could have wanted. Mm. Mm. And so the way they think is that yes, they, they know we've worked very hard to to be where we are right now. And to them is to encourage them to make sure they also serve the nation when their time comes. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, I would like to have a lot more time with the family. Yes. I'd like to have a lot more time for myself mm, because there's a limit as to how far you can go in terms of public service. Mm -hmm. That's why they even say, even some of these jobs, you know, you cannot do it more than 10 years. Whether you are governor or president, you know, there's a good reason for that because beyond that, you start getting diminishing returns. <laughs> <laughs> That's very interesting. <laughs> All right, uh, thank you so much um, for allowing us uh, to be here and have this conversation with you. And maybe we can just sum it up by you speaking to Kenyans, especially on the festivities. This is a time that Kenyans really uh, travel up country, and so much happens during such a time, especially in the transport sector. Yeah. Yes, certainly. Already we started to see um, some of these adverse occur occurrences where, you know, for example, accidents and so forth. We would like really to, to impress on Kenyans. You know, life is precious. And you have to make sure that if you are a driver, for example, life is precious more than money. And so people have to be diligent. Always remember you are carrying lives and not bags of maize and so forth. And so you will be extra careful, all of us. There will be festivities, people get carried away with uh, drinking and so forth. You have to know that your life and life of the people around you are number one priority. Let's go back to the villages, those who can support the people in the villages, support the people who are needy, the elderly, the um, the physically disabled, physically challenged. Let's be a time of reflection. Make sure we give back to the community as much as we can. Above all, stay safe. Mm -hmm. mm. Above all, whether it's through accidents or through COVID transmission, because this is a time also when we get a lot of this uh, transmission because people do marry and do whatever. The Ministry of Health has done very well to contain the transmission of COVID. Mm -hmm. 
we don't want that to escalate during these festiv festivities. Waziri, Jess Masharia, thank you so much for your time and for allowing us to your beautiful place to have this conversation. And we hope to do more, especially when you make that decision <laughs> come 9th, come Only, 8th on, only two months from now, uh -huh. I'll call you for, uh, for a briefing. Okay. Either way, to kunya chai kule. Halafu numabia, mabu ita kuna mna gani. Okay, asante sana. Merry Christmas. Thanks. Merry Christmas to you and Merry Christmas to Kenyans. All right, that has been Cabinet Secretary James Mashere in charge of transport and so many other ministries that uh, he's responsible for a very huge responsibility that he has and he has been working with the government of President Kenyatta since 2013 in two different ministries. Bye for now. Thank you.